Ladies and gentlemen, thank you. Um, it's always good to be amongst experts. And since we're a small group, our expertise is going to be heavily drawn on today. I can, I can feel that. But, uh, but I also feel that um, despite this rather intimidating classroom-style arrangement, um, this should be, uh, given the range of experience and, and uh, the skills uh, uh, around the list of participants here, this, this should be, and we can turn it into, something like a seminar, something like a way of teasing out um, Anthony's question to us, which I really feel is about the changing shape of science publishing. Um, Outsell, uh, for whom every now and then I do some work, produced a report on this from Denny Eau Claire, an excellent report uh, uh, last year. Uh, no, earlier this year. And uh, that report is, is the basis of what I have to say. What I think of it is, as always, my own. Um, dangerously heretical, um, I hope. Anyway, let's see. Um, uh, and let's get, uh, um, uh, first of all, to, uh, uh, to some of the things that are happening. First of all, I mean, think about government funding. Um, uh, on the rise, huge percentage of, uh, uh, of, um, of uh, research and development spending across governments with those three uh, leading players, China, India, uh, and the United States, as ever, blazing a trail. I say, as ever, the emergence of China and uh, India as huge funders of R&D is, of course, in itself a symptom of what Anthony's talking about. It's a symptom of pressure. It's a symptom of societies who feel that things have to change faster than they're currently changing. And... Uh, uh, and, and that's, to me, very significant. Um, technology change is, is partly uh, 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 a factor here. The very fact that we're living in a searchable world in the post-paper society um, seems to me to have a significance all of its own. Um, uh, we cannot now pretend uh, in any way that... Um, the uh, research paper, the uh, report of a project, uh, stands alone as the only monument to what took place in research. The, the, the very fact that we have myriad ways now of tracking what's happening, and the fact that what's happening is so great that we will never track it all, means, of course, that we're going to be living in a world where we map what's happening without having ever read everything that's happening. So uh, our referencing skills uh, are getting greater, uh, our mapping skills are increasing, our reading time is static. It's an important factor. The sustainability of life and our planet, look at food, look at uh, energy, look at... Uh, uh, global warming, look at anything you like, um, pushes the research envelope all the time. This morning, um, the announcement that uh, uh, a, uh, a team, I think uh, um, uh, a UK-led team from, the, from Bristol, I think, uh, has discovered that, um, uh, that uh, uh, um, antimicrobials in China uh, are resistant to uh, everything we can throw at them, is the sort of pressure that we're talking about. So innovation and discovery and reiterated innovation grow in importance. Private and public funding increases. I think the other thing that I want to, to, to underline a hundred times uh, in the course of, of these few minutes is that, that while government funding grows, private funding grows even quicker. Partly philanthropic, think of Gates, um, uh, partly directly commercially orientated. Um, so, uh, and as these things grow, so 
the traditional roles of, of, of players un come under increasing scrutiny. People like me, grey beards like me, who entered an industry which was library dominated, now find themselves in an industry which I think is increasingly funder dominated. And as we move through the OA years, as we move towards um, uh, a greater share of revenue in APCs, and I know that many publishers say this is going to be significant and many others say it is, in, it is grossly insignificant, um, uh, but as we move down that track, then I think we're going to see um, uh, a, a change of balance in the industry. Um, we're moving to the end user. We're moving to, um, to what you can do in a research team, what you can do uh, in the network. We're, we're moving very much towards a different publishing model. The need to, scrut to scrutinize the traditional roles is no less. Um, and in order to scrutinize, uh, uh, and I use the word scrutiny rather than, rather than peer review, uh, for obvious reasons, because scrutiny is a much wider expression. Um, we need to have comparability and we need to have accessibility. And I think one of my, <coughs> one of my conclusions from reading Denny's report was very much the idea that actually competition is diminishing in the publishing world as we face customers who want access to everything on the same terms at the same time. So we need to collaborate, whereas competition between um, publishers and uh, other agencies within the, uh, within the framework of, uh, of uh, making research reporting uh, and research results available and making them uh, accessible, uh, that competition is increasing. Um, <coughs> In a sense, this has already happened. It's happened in uh, the research business itself. Um, collaboration is growing and is improving. If we're going to get value for money, then people have to know how other teams are working, have to know how, uh, what issues are being uh, faced, what problems have been resolved, what problems remain, um, uh, getting value out of research which duplicates uh, other research and finds the same problems is not um, uh, always acceptable to, to funders. Um, uh, of course, a lot of research has to uh, cover the same ground and prove the same points. But actually, discovering the same issues uh, in the course of a piece of research which was blind to others in the marketplace um, maybe uh, a, a false uh, a false dawn, um, and of course, if we're going to to hand out funding, whether we're government or Gates, we have to know who's getting it, and so the the, the records about who has worked successfully, and what they've done in the marketplace, and how they have um, uh, have been able to leverage that research. That becomes absolutely vital. Uh, um, am I the only one, I wonder, who thinks that rather than have a marketplace which is based vitally upon research reporting, we have a marketplace which is based vitally on metadata about what happened to research in the subsequent field of activity. Um, and we're now beginning to get some, uh, some decent attempts in the marketplace. I note Uber Research here, and I'll note others as I go through, um, to uh, begin to build data sets around, in this case, who is funding what. Um, peer review is, of course, going to be a vital question. The more, however, that I look at the peer review questions at the moment, and Denny's report is a terrific um, lens for looking at peer review questions, the more I wonder whether peer review is not at its most important in awarding research grants rather than um, uh, in 
um, creating terms of publication. It seems to me very much that the emphasis from funders, you look at their viewpoint, is very much about being discriminatory about the key teams and the key individuals and the people in the marketplace who can carry out this research successfully and uh, the additionality which that research will create rather than um, the, uh, um, the, uh, um, the presence of that research in the publication space. That, of course, could be well be speeded by open access, could certainly be speeded by the increasing adoption of post-publication peer review. Um, publishers have always regarded peer review as the last barricade, the, um, the defensive wall. Um, I would suggest to you that that wall is crumbling, not because of publishers' inability to defend it, but because the structure of the marketplace is changing. Um, more science creates more science, of course. Greater cost realism. Um, uh, those dreadful letters, FEC, full economic cost calculations, come more and more and more into the attitudes of funders. And why? You've got to get the best possible bang for your buck. Um, it's got to be... Uh, about stretching the available dollars um, as far as they will possibly go. And if you don't recognize the cost of selecting the projects, if you don't recognize the cost of the APC, if you don't recognize all the other um, uh, uh, costs which uh, accrue around a research award, then it's very hard for grant hold, for, for grant. Uh, giving organizations to keep a control of their own costs. Um, one of the reasons, as they look at this, why I think they are increasingly um, looking at uh, self-publishing environments is just cost realism. And we'll come back to that a little bit later on. Um, so... So my conclusion here really is that proposal peer review um, is, uh, is more and more valuable. Um, publication peer review is less and less valuable. Um, funding. Um, uh, so funding agencies uh, into spreading their funding across as wide a body of work as possible um, uh, seem to me to be moving more and more towards um, uh, a, uh, a management of funding attitude. Um, giving, the, giving the grant and allowing uh, staged reports to come in at regular intervals for internal consumption no longer seems to be quite the, um, uh, the issue. Um, doing uh, proper progress reporting and doing ethical due diligence um, and making those things open is becoming an increasing part of the ethic of, um, of private funders especially. So that means they get to publish more and more. The scholarly communications network gets richer and richer as data flows on uh, work in progress and data flows on uh, ethical issues. And this raises problems. Um, it, praises, it, it raises, first of all, the problem of project confidentiality. So the research team idea that they were going to hold uh, the results until final publication um, uh, uh, comes up against the issues raised by funders that if there are real uh, blocks or problems in this research, those should be known to the rest of the research community and notified as soon as they're available. So a clash takes place. Equally, a clash takes place uh, around rivals and duplications. Um, should funders map duplications? Should they map rivals? Um, is this about competition or is there an ethical positioning issue here? If two projects are 
at the same stage down the same lines, would it be more cost effective for them to join forces or at least to talk and collaborate or not? Um, so uh, uh, a load of issues there arising from a great deal more information in the marketplace. Um, and then um, uh, we come to the movement um, strongly in the, uh, in the NIS and in the Howard Hughes Medical Fund uh, towards funding individuals. And that brings the ethical questions out even more. So if I simply say I'm not going to give um, a, re a research project to look at this particular cancer cell, I'm going to, to fund Professor X for five years, that's, that's a much better way of doing it than the way in which Professor X makes his, his work available to a wider scientific public long before publication becomes extremely interesting. Uh, so um, uh, there, are, uh, there are issues there. But above all, uh, we have found, looking at, um, uh, at the information available in the marketplace around uh, funding and projects, a huge uh, lack of metadata consistency. It's not a lack of metadata. Tons of stuff now. Lots of analytics coming out, lots of people building databases out there, but comparability, uh, uh, consistency, uh, standards, not so good. Um, open access, I have to mention, um, uh, 184 sources now uh, on, uh, on Sherpa. Uh, I think embargo periods, that's going to be a, an area of discussion. Um, they're very various. Are they diminishing? I don't know of any trend analysis here yet, but uh, uh, are they getting shorter? Um, will they get shorter? Becomes uh, uh, an important issue. Um, what happens to all those provisional uh, interim findings that I was talking about? Do they get published under open access? Um, uh, will they become something which people rely upon more than the research uh, filing itself. And open data access, critical issue. We're now getting more and more people interested in publishing data. Um, we have uh, a number of places, um, Figshare, for example, um, Dryad, where, where data can be published easily and quickly, not subject to peer review normally, um, uh, so what will happen with data access? I think a critical position, if you as a publisher think of yourself as handling the whole process of uh, producing results in the marketplace. Um, yes, metrics. Um, oh, thank you. Um, uh, I will leave this slide as it is then. Um, uh, uh, but basically, we're back to the old question. How long can we wait? Um, uh, do we need to publish preliminary results to get citations? Do uh, uh, immediate uh, post-publication, do we do immediate post-publication peer review? Um, uh, and... Uh, um, uh, and do we need to know what other funders are funding? I think critical questions. Interestingly, we now have a database of the curriculum vitae of network experts uh, in scientific research, and I think that has become uh, a vital part of, uh, of the continuum of information and impact. Um, in a week when uh, Thomson Reuters... Um, uh, announced it was uh, under, undergoing or putting IP and science into a strategic review. Uh, it's interesting, isn't it, that um, the traditional ways of looking at impact factors um, uh, from Gene Garfield onwards are now under huge and serious marketplace pressure. 
And so we begin to look at those, at those factors uh, and who is going to repair the system and build a holistic way of measuring impact. Um, uh, we are, at the moment, up in the air. Um, so now, um, uh, there's a market need, I think, to get the data together, to get consistency and to get standards. We've got huge amounts of, uh, of, uh, of information, analysis, taxonomy. We don't have very many solutions or answers which funders will demand. Um, uh, um, is there an impact factor for, fu for funders that will look like SciVal or Web of Science? Uh, can we create a standard classification? Or will some current funders do it for themselves? Um, you will have noticed, I'm sure, this week that uh, a research grant given by, um, uh, by Gates um, uh, uh, has funded the creation of learning tools for, um, uh, for postgraduate research. Now, it's kind of interesting, isn't it? How far is that away from saying, uh, these APCs, if we pay enough of them, why don't we create some tools and distribute them to researchers and publish ourselves in uh, Gates-branded journals? It seems to me that uh, we're on the doorstep of the, um, the possibility of funder publishing. Uh, in the collaborative world, we have to find a way of working with funders. We have to find a way of working with where the researcher marketplace has gone. We are no longer in the library-driven world. Time for change. Thank you, Anthony. <laughs>